everyone! So I thought today let's just play around with good old watercolors. I feel like I haven't done this for a really long time, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of craving watercolor swatches and playing with it and sort of mixing colors and letting um, granulating colors mingle with uh, just regular colors. and just have a little bit of fun so i hope you will join me on that and let's have a little bit of a swatching um play time so um i will also be showing um how i would use my swatch joy which is the latest um build your own clear stamp set so you have different aspects here that you can basically build uh, these into so you have a um, couple of the swatches in fact these three are supposed to be different um, swatches uh, shapes of swatches and then you can create palettes like that like this you could also create um, oval swatches and also have them that way so we, i think we'll explore everything on the back here i have used this oval swatch to create a face illustration which is right here so i don't know how far i can stretch this video i don't want it to be too long um and mainly i just want it to be about playing with watercolors and experimenting so i will see what i will use and how we'll use it but i'll give you a few examples that i might need to create like a separate video for these cute little faces that you can turn them into so let me know if you would be interested in that so in fact uh, you can also use this tube as a fourth way of displaying your swatches which would be more of a sketchier more of a fun um, sketchbook look and that's for the swatches then we have the main event which is this lovely little frame here and this is where build your own comes in so we have one two three four five six elements here that you could decide which ones you want to skip or which ones you would to include typically i would use all of these five at the bottom and the date i would leave for something else like dating your artwork um, or you would um, you would just stamp date and then handwrite the numbers or if you have one of those um, stamps with the dates you could use that next to it that kind of makes it look a bit more um, cute maybe and art journal like uh, or you could also use this to number your light fastness experiments and tests um, so coming back to this frame here i have an example where you can take one color and do this for every single color if you ever had the time or if you wanted to explore and experiment with your watercolors you can go through your entire collection and do a nice little sample of every single color uh, writing down the pigment numbers the light fastness transparency with this actually black line here as opposed to going to transparency um, to fit it in I have made a little mistake here and uh, stamped it where the granulation is obviously we don't need this black line for granulation so make sure you push the transparency right back to the line to give yourself enough space here or otherwise you know you could figure out that this says transparency and just go over it uh, with watercolor to see how transparent it is or opaque indeed so that's what I will be um, you know playing with today and let's start with different uh, swatch ideas so how would I create different kind of looks of swatches luckily I have actually written down exactly the numbers that I have used here so to begin with this is the Schmincke Viridian just as it is and then here I mix it with something else which I won't be able to tell you exactly what but all of these colors were created here so when I was designing the back of my um, stamp set insert I basically had a go and were, was kind of picking the right colors that I wanted it to be and I really like this combo which is Daniel Smith Conacredon Deep Gold which Minke Glacier Green. So that's one of the very granulating new colors that came out. I think this was from the 
the yeah the glacier set that I had so it had a number of I think five different colors so this is the glacier green so those are the two colors we will be using today to play around and see what sort of mixes we can create and let's start with that so um, I'm going to use my round um, acrylic block which I think by now have been sold out this one is still available along with uh, quite a few other restocks that I recently had uh, on my Etsy Alona Creates and for this big piece here I'm going to use one of my all to new um, acrylic blocks to fit it in and that's what I will do Okay, so what we can do is we can just start really easily and go ahead and kind of stamp this one. Today for stamping I'm going to use black ink. I know usually I do a different uh, style of stamping where I use like a very light colored nude colored ink and then I go over with the pen. But today I wanted to show you if you had no time for that or no desire um, and you wanted to just go in with your black ink and be done with it and actually enjoy the the watercolor process instead of spending time on this then that's what you can do. So we're going to ink it up and that's what you get. I made sure that the lines are super super fine and it looks like you have actually done it with a pen. So I'm just going to go ahead and do like a nice line of these swatches. By the way my um, ink pad is coming to an end. I actually need to get it and get a new one and this ink pad lasted a good four years maybe? Just, just remarkable for black ink and I've been using it quite frequently so if you see some lines not stamping it's not the um, stamps fault. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm going in a straight line I'm not sort of measuring anything here I just want to stamp a long line of these um, full pans they're not sized to the original sizing, um, but they just give you an idea. So that's one way of doing things and it's really easy and simple. Then I also have uh, this other one here. So I've got this one, which is a lot smaller as you can see. So we could do maybe other colors. Um, so when you're doing this you probably will have in mind how many colors you want to do etc. I'm not thinking about it at the minute at all. All I'm doing is just stamping them and of course to make it a little bit more organic you can just rotate them um, to change up the shapes like this so they don't look exactly the same. So as you can see they have this lovely sketchy look to them. So I think I can do two more maybe. One and two. Okay, so that would be our, how many colors do we have here? Six, eight, nine colors. Okay, so that's that. And then we have the round one, which I also want to show you how I would use that. So we have the round. Again, you can rotate it whichever way you want to have these swatches. But let's say I want them this way. So I just go ahead and stamp them. Oop. Okay. So different ways of presenting your swatches 
And these sort of exercises are very, very useful um, to do. So not necessarily do you feel or do you need to feel the pressure of having a finished artwork. It can be just the um, experimenting of the colouring or the, the water colouring. So let's just move these up here a little bit and then start with our swatches. So at the top, let's do what we promised. Or what I promised rather. I'm trying to find a little palette. Okay, just going to get a palette. Okay, so I have a little tray here and I'm pretty convinced that this is the Quinacridon Deep Gold, but just in case, I'll give it a little test run somewhere here. Just to see if it's the same thing. I also have my washed rug here. Okay, so this is our... What I believe, Kunakudan Deep Gold, but let's see if I'm right. one is escaping a little bit. I mean it looks pretty identical. If it's not exactly the same it could be by another brand but no I'm pretty sure it's that same pigment here. It's looking identical. Okay so I can use that up. Okay yeah so let's start with adding some Schmincke Glacier Green. So this is a PR233 and PG50. And then this one is PO48 and PY150. So we are going to use this little. Oh, large stamp to document all of these things. But firstly, let's just start by swatching out a color on each end. And what we will do is eventually bring them, kind of mixing them together. So here is Oh, I had a bit left of the quinacridon deep gold, but that should be now washed out. Okay, so here we go. So these are two different spectrums and you can see beautiful granulation happening. So what I tend to do is basically have the colors like so and then if I wanted to for instance let me just make a bigger puddle of one color loads of water because otherwise it will be quite opaque and you won't see that beautiful granulation so these colors I'm not sure if I can speak the same about every single color the glacier colors but they definitely as you can see the pigments are separating nicely and then from that point we start adding a touch of quinacridone gold now quinacridone gold is a very um, social color so it likes to kind of get in there quite quickly and even sometimes be quite pushy so you can see we went to this beautiful green color now again I'm going to add a touch more so this will start going even greener Oh, 
like that. To avoid making the mix very, very watery, I'm just using my rag to dry the brush off a little. And so now we're getting into these colors. Warmer and kind of olive toned colors. So we still have three more goes and I'm going to again take the excess off of the brush and then mix more of the Conacridon deep gold. So you can see we're now going away from this color coming closer to the orange. This is a beautiful color as well. So the more you stamp of these, the more graduation you can get. A gradual change of tone, shifting from one end to the other. Okay, so let's now create a really creamy mix here and go in. Because after that we only have one more left. This is also beautiful, a very warm tone. Now if you wanted to you could even touch the colors in between and let them flow um, which would be even more interesting but I'm sometimes in the mood for it and sometimes I'm not so now I'm going to create a very very saturated in color mix right here. Get as much as I can onto my brush and then go into here. Basically we still don't want this color to be identical to the original but we want also it to be different from the previous. It's somewhere bang in the middle and this is a nice, very nice color because it's quite close yet different enough. So there we go. I'm seeing some absolutely stunning color separations here. I will bring it all up and close so you can see later. And what we could do is maybe we could do the same as I just did but just with the Viridian over here. I think that would be nice. Gosh I feel bad about getting rid of this. It just it's so beautiful. So the other thing I wanted to do on this other side here is to make a record of the colors that we're using. So I'm going to use this large stamp set trying to follow the lines to stick it on nice and straight. Okay so I have um, a little bit of a problem here in terms of firstly this side of the sketchbook is new so I only have a few pages here which means it wouldn't um, lay flat. Secondly, my ink pad is coming to an end, so it's not a great recipe to create a perfect swatch um, or stamp uh, image, but um, basically what you need to do is put something underneath, maybe if you have like a couple of magazines or something like that to level out the, um, the sketchbook, and then when you are loading ink onto your stamp make sure you go and rotate it because sometimes there could be a dent maybe in the middle if you have been using it in the middle a lot and taken a lot of the ink out of there so make sure you just go around a few times obviously you don't need to do that if you have a nice um, fresh enough ink pad and then I'm going to stamp that as a third color here so it stamps perfectly fine. So in case you wonder why these are a bit thicker line than that one, I just wanted to explain to you that I had to re-stamp these two images because of the problem before. But if you do it like I said, make sure the level is nice and straight and you have a you have enough ink on your um, 
clear stamp then stamping won't be an issue at all just keep that in mind okay so now let's carry on by just watching the color up here I'm going to start here and just make a large swatch now it's up to you could do more here and then water it out towards the bottom or you can go from left to right like so with more water on one end and then we do the same with this quinacridone gold deep in fact, I could get it even deeper. There we go. That's more like it. Obviously, when you are going to use watercolor, make sure your ink is permanent, so waterproof. And then, as the final color, I'm going to use the Viridian and just clean up my palette here. All right, so here we've got Viridian. Viridian is not a color that goes very, very dark. There's only so much color density that you can achieve so you can see if even if I'm going to create the thickest pane here it's still not going any darker it will just kind of become more creamy and stop moving around um, it won't have that sort of flowy look so we, we do need to have a fair amount of water with Viridian to make it look beautiful and work the best it can so that's that and I think I'm going to also take that excess water off here like that. Okay, so that's that. Now let's try and do a similar thing with these two colors on the smaller swatches. So I'm going to add, actually I'm going to make a big puddle of it. I find that I go through the Viridian very, very quickly. It's a color that um, works really quickly through mixing so let's put Viridian up here and then we had our quinacridone escape a little bit I'm trying to use this one up because it dried so hard it's kind of difficult to move this dried blob so look I'm going to just really create a very rich almost too thick swatch here but it's it's good to know the difference now I'm going to mix that in with the Viridian like that look you can see how pushy it is it's now pushing pushing and here we have got, we might want to add a bit of water, it sort of seems a little bit too thick. So I'm just going to add two brushfuls of water and I'm going to start adding a bit more. So we should get a very nice range of greens. Now in fact this one is a kind of like a sap green really. And And then we should go into browns. But before we get into browns, we should get nice olive greens. This is not different enough. So refer to your previous swatch to see how different it is. That's why I find working in large palettes like that gives me enough space and it's comfortable to hold like your phone. <laughs> it's like, you know, feels natural. Um, and yeah, if you have phone withdrawal symptoms, that is. 
um, and it's give you it's giving you enough space to mix comfortably without feeling like you're squeezed into small space so just play around and I think this is a good color it's definitely warmer than the previous one if a color is similar to the previous then go back in and mix something a bit more in all right so I'm going to wash my brush at this point and then load a bit more. So I'm just going to first put some to the side here so we can go back to that. And then this is now getting closer to this color, so it's even warmer. If I want to add a bit more, I can still do that. So that's a nice color. The trick is always the quantity of water. You want to have enough water there. If you have too much pigment and not enough water, the watercolor won't flow as you would like it to flow and as you would expect it to flow. So this is fairly similar to the previous one, but it's good enough, I'd say. And now finally a bunch of this color so we don't want to have this color but we want to have a color close to it and that's pretty good right here so you see if I only stamped out say five or six I wouldn't be able to get such a wide range of colors now you could also you know do a longer one as well if you wanted to that's not a problem. You can do as long as you want. Uh, you could do like a whole page of it if you wanted one day to have some bit more fun with it. Totally fine to do. Okay, so um, I will let these dry a little bit, settle a little bit, and then I want to also do these swatches here. And I'm thinking of doing something slightly different just to, you know, make things a bit more interesting. So we will see how that goes. <laughs> 